This is the Serengeti as never seen before. Viewed through the eyes of East African guides Richard Knocker and John Vikivuyu, award-winning wildlife photographer Paul Joynson Hicks and inspirational filmmaker Eliza Paul. For the first time in decades, this extraordinary wilderness stands almost empty. A unique but bittersweet time to be here. Over eight days, they'll be bringing you a rare glimpse of the Serengeti and all its inhabitants in a visual diary. We hope this encourages you on your own Serengeti safari, so together we can continue to conserve this precious wilderness. This is Eliza giving her morning instructions to everyone. Ricardo's got that slightly tired, not tired, he's got that slightly vacant expression on his face. How are you, Jumbi? Good okay. morning! Oh, all right, all right. Ricardo? Super. Tip top. Edie? Perfect. Day after my birthday, Yay. girl. Paolo, 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 do you read? I read you five by five, big cheese. Big cheese? <laughs> How are you guys doing there? Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's very beautiful and very empty. How are you getting on? We just had a really interesting sighting with it. Um, there was a kill, um, fresh wildebeest as usual. There was a lot of hyenas, sort of twenty-five or thirty hyenas there, and jackals oh. and vultures, and six poor lions looking on and, and wishing they could get in there. And uh, people have always underestimated the hyenas. Yeah. That, you know, that they are only scavengers. Yeah. But hyenas are really super successful hunters. They're so good at it, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. So here are those despondent lions again, waiting patiently for the hyenas to be done. Yeah, so they reckon it's, what is it, a ratio of about four hyenas to a lioness, and maybe ten to an adult male lion. I only see one of the adult. Yeah. And then the rest of them are youngsters. Right. It was weird, that. It was weird because, you know, normally on a certain behavior, you will see the competition, mm. you know, and even, yes, proportionally, there was many hyenas than lions. Yeah. But still, they wouldn't have... But even the hyenas been, weren't fighting each yeah, other. Yeah, they were not fighting yeah, each other. Usually, it's mayhem there. But again, what was interesting is just to watch those lions watching the hyena eat. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can know, see it's, them it's, it's, wondering if there's going to be anything left for them. It's amazing. <laughs> So what we've got here is a herd of eland and, uh, and it's so exciting to see these because we, you see them from time to time but they're really skittish and, uh, and it's impossible to get a good film of them or a good photograph because they, you literally drive up and they run off from miles away. Whereas now they're sitting there on our horizon and... Uh, okay, so what's interesting about eland is they are our heaviest antelope. They're so heavy. Um, and also, if you've ever been close to an eland, you hear a clicking sound as they walk. Now, the reason for that is that they've got two hoofs and a tendon that's holding it all together. And as, they, as they, their weight bears down on the hoof, it separates. And then as it, the foot comes up, click, click, click. You learn that first here. How about that? Eland. Ah, brilliant. And so we... You know, impala are so common that we often overlook them and we forget, forget to stop and look at them, but they're such beautiful animals. It's one of the most elegant of the antelopes. Those beautiful spiral horns, such gorgeous things. So it's really nice to take a bit of time and stop and look at them. And uh, easily you can tell in, uh, with impala, males have horns and female doesn't have horns which is uh, not the case for other antelopes. Yeah, like I mean, wildebeest, think wildebeest, wildebeest, yeah. for example. Eland, yeah. There's the male just coming in. Do you see him? Lovely. The long-crested eagle is one of my favorite raptors. He's so beautiful. And one of the amazing things about him is he's a perch and pounce hunter. So he sits up on his tree, looks around, sees something down below, whoosh, down, grabs it, really saves energy. Spectacular. So 
Okay, so um, we followed Richard and John B's uh, tip on the radio and uh, we found that amazing uh, hyena kill. And you've got the hyenas and they're all battling together and you've got the vultures and the jackals and everyone wants a bit of the action. That's a bit braver. I can put carcass cam down there. Mm. The carcass cam might get pulverised. Then. Yeah. We found the lions and they're youngsters. So, so they're sitting around the edge looking at this um, carcass being eaten by the, by the hyenas salivating. Now the problem is, there's probably about 20 hyenas here. And we only see two young, young lions, you know, a young male about a year old, maybe another one about 15, 16 months. Yeah. And there's some other youngsters, I think, because these are the pride we saw yesterday. And so, you know, they're not big enough, they're not strong enough, they're not powerful enough to scare 20 hyena off a kill. So they have to wait. So, John B. Yes. A cheetah on a termite mound. It's amazing. It's classic, isn't it? It's very classic. Yeah. Uh, it seems like you no, know, he is not hungry. Yeah, because I mean, we saw him absolutely. Those warthogs came past, oh, the yes. two little babies, and he yeah. looked at them, and then he just watched them. He was vaguely interested, but it was like, nah. you know, no, yeah. So nothing, not much is happening we'll with him. him so we will probably just leave him in, you know, on his rest and mm. go look for something else. All right. Pretty baby. Yeah. Okay, so good afternoon. Um, we have been asked a little bit like uh, a little bit about what is the Serengeti like now, five months after we started our project, our filming project. And uh, to be honest, when we started Nabi, it, the Serengeti was empty. No cars, no other tourists. It was it was empty. It was extraordinary. Uh, it was eerie. It was sad, obviously. Um, Serenera, you know, we saw one or two other vehicles occasionally, but again, it was really empty and again, a very eerie, I mean, an extraordinary time to be there, but again, a bit sad. Um, so our last series, uh, Kogatende, when we were here, um, last month, it was extraordinary because we were seeing more and more vehicles come in, which is great because hotels, camps and lodges were opening, uh, flights were starting, um, Business was picking up a, a little bit, but it's a tiny, tiny portion, proportion of what we really need to get back and to get people's lives back, you know, in action again. People earning, you know, the poor people working in the tourism sector here are devastated. Likes happen throughout the world. Our passion is obviously Tanzania and the Serengeti. So now this series again, you know, we're seeing flights come in, we're seeing cars at the airport, but there's one or two cars here, one or two cars there. You can drive around for a long time without seeing a single car still, uh, which is again, extraordinary, uh, but it's still sad. So I suppose what this little blurb is about is that we still need you. Now is a great time to come because the Serengeti is full of wildlife and there's so few visitors. Hotels are open, camps are open. Flight charter flights are available, scheduled flights are available, and there's still no one here. So it's a great time to come. So please, if you are thinking of a safari and it's a bit complicated maybe because of quarantine when you come back, I totally understand that. But if you don't have those complications or you can overcome those complications, then come on, get yourselves and your families and your friends, get yourselves here to the Serengeti. It is amazing. Come on, I know you can.